Hi, my name is Tess and welcome to Dusty Betty. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Trek Roscoe 9. All right, this bike is set up on 29 by 2.6s, um, which is great because it means you can run them pretty low if you want. Pretty handy with a hard tail. And I just figured I'd start out with pressure a little high because as a light rider, it's gonna give me a better feel for, you know, if this frame rides pretty harsh for someone who's light or if it's gonna be a little bit softer. But of course, with tires that wide, we can air them down quite a bit, which will soften the ride a ton. The reach on this bike is 440. I've got a 65 degree head tube angle and a 73.1 degree seat tube angle. Chain say I want to say it's around 443. I feel like it's more playful than I thought it would be. There have been times where I was coming around a corner and there was just a little drop. I'd try and see if I could push the front end of the bike up and out at the last minute. It was so easy, so little input to get this bike aloft. You are just so cute, doggy. Why you be so cute with That's pretty hair? Good, good luck. Oh. So some of the things that set my bike reviews apart from other people have a lot to do with my rider profile. Let me get this climb over with. All right. I have pretty long legs and a little bit shorter torso. I also am often in between bike sizes between a small and a medium. So if you can relate to any of those things, then uh, my reviews should be especially valuable to you. So when you are on the lighter spectrum, bike weight can really matter because, you know, for, for me, if it's like significantly more my percentage of body weight um, than another bike, that can matter. I'm not actually sure how much this bike weighs. I feel like it rides fairly light for, uh, um, an aluminum bike like this um, but I do feel like having the bigger uh, tires that rotational weight you do feel it on the climbs a little bit it's uh, it's very responsive and I can climb all the same things on this I can on my other bikes but I do feel like um, on those standing sprints when you can usually put down some power and you hit a point where you reach enough momentum that it gets easier. It's a little harder to hit that with bigger wheels and tires. However, it's going to take a lot of the sting out of riding a hard tail. And that is exaggerated when you're light, when you don't have as much weight on the frame, um, frames feel more rigid. And so that can really help. 2.6 is to someone who's light and small, probably feel like a 3.0 to like a 180 pound guy who's riding a large. At least that's my theory. Now, as I said, I am often right in between bike sizes, which is also true with the Roscoe. This is a size medium. You know, if you are between sizes and you're about 5.4 like I am, one thing you should really consider is the dropper seat post on this medium is only 130 millimeters of travel. If you go down to a size small, you're only gonna get 100 mil. This bike's really fun. Gets rolling and carries some good momentum. Those big tires, you can rail on them pretty hard. Now I feel like plenty stretched out on this at five feet, four inches tall. I think if I was much shorter than me, it might be a bit much um, because, yeah, I mean, even even if I'm riding a little steeper section, I'm, I'm plenty stretched out at 440. That's a pretty nice long bike for me. For me, that's a plenty adequately 
challenging climb on a hardtail. But it's up for it. So let's take a look at the drivetrain and uh, the fork real quick. It's got Shimano XT 12 speed, which is, you know, fantastic. That's a really great drivetrain. This has a Fox Rhythm 36 fork with 140 millimeters of travel. And the Fox Rhythm is actually a pretty great fork. It's about as low as you can go in Fox's line and, and be like, yeah, that's a fork that you would intentionally want to spec on your bike. So it goes really well on this build. As I said, I've started out with about 20 PSI in the tires. It's higher than I need to run, but I wanted to get a little bit more of a feel for the frame. And I have to say, I'm really impressed because when you are small and light, some of these frames can really beat the heck out of you. And I mean, this is actually feeling really good. So I'm pretty stoked about that. I will let some pressure out. I do think the 2.6 tires really help gentle that out in addition, but I, I do have to give some credit to this frame. It's really easy to uh, push that front end of the bike out coming off a, a drop, even at the last minute or at slow speeds. A couple things to consider if you're deciding between full suspension and hardtail is, first of all, not all trails really benefit from being on full suspension. Plenty of places that I've been where hardtail is actually a little more fun. When there's just a little bit of moderate tech and a lot of flow and really pumpy and little flowy climbs and descents, really great on a hardtail. The maintenance is also a lot easier. You don't have to take your rear suspension apart every couple of months to clean stuff. And you're not maintaining a shock. If you ride somewhere where things can get muddy, having a hardtail is nice and simple with that maintenance. And keep in mind too, you can ride hardtails on hard trails if that's your drive. You know, especially if you're newer to the sport, you want to just get into something, you can buy it. It's got great parts that you can just enjoy and ride the heck out of it for a few years. I think this Roscoe 9 is a really great bike for that. Yeah, it's really nice. I feel, with my shortish torso, I feel really stable and planted anytime. This trail only has a couple of spots that get a little bit steep. There's nothing too crazy out here, but it feels pretty dang good. I also think this frame is soft enough that you could get away with putting a little bit narrower tires on here. Um, something faster rolling if you wanted to save a little weight. Yeah, that power transfer of not having rear suspension is such a fun feeling on a climb. But those tires, that rotational weight is a little more work to push. But I will say the way those things go when it's your personal bike is, you know, you ride for a couple weeks on it and you're kind of used to it. You just get stronger if you need to. Pretty good at that slow speed climb, picking through that area, I'm impressed. The stack height on this is nice. It's a little higher than some of my personal bikes. Uh, and I really like it in combination with the reach on this. Just feels really good. I feel aggressively positioned, but not hunched over. And this bike is picking up momentum beautifully. is pretty dang smooth. Oof. A little, I'm a little awkward on the switchbacks. But the bike handles it well, that's for sure. This bike is really fun downhill. And it's, I, I love how the bigger tires really take a lot of the twitchiness out of the riding. And you know, this box rhythm is pretty awesome. Even though it's a little work to pedal these heavier tires through here, um, it's still a smooth ride, even though this bike is a hardtail. I don't feel like I'm sawing logs like 
at the bottom of every pedal stroke. The bike is still propelling itself and carrying the momentum well for what it is. These little spots right here are a little peppery and no problem on a hardtail like this. Plenty long for me, feels great. Good job, Trek. To climb. <clears throat> this climb is sneaky. You get up that and you think you're done, and you got just a little more to do. Right through here. Yeah. There we go. I will say, though. I ride my full suspension bikes most of the time and a hardtail on uh, this terrain that has trails I'm riding today have maybe some moderate tech, but it is a little more work on a hardtail, not going to lie, but you get so strong doing it. That 65 degree head tube angle is really fun downhill. It just pitches the front wheel out there enough uh, between that and you know, some pretty decent hubs on this build. This bike just loves to get cruising. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes bikes with wider tires like this still feel a little heavy on the downhill, just a little marshmallowy and slow-mo, but um, this one doesn't feel clunky going downhill at all. It feels sporty, plenty sporty. Oh, I hate it when I see people's toilet paper on the side of the trail. Pack it in, pack it out, buddy. So that was a chuck wagon loop. Now I'm catching a little connector so I can go ride in Moscow. Trek also makes a Roscoe 6. But I think one thing that's good for you to know about that is this review will not be helpful feedback for you. It's a completely different bike. The Roscoe 6, totally different frame, totally different geo, meal spacing and all that. So. Um, if you're shopping for that one, can't really help you. It's going to be totally different from this. I would probably look more at the Roscoe 789 because those are going to have more upgradable parts. It's got the boost spacing. It's just going to give you a lot of better modern options. I really love the high engagement hub on this bike. I do ride enough tech that I do a lot of half ratcheting and I want something that when I start pedaling, it's going to engage quickly. Um, I believe it's only the nine that comes with that hub. So if I want something that I can just buy, ride as is for a few years, and it's gonna be great and be everything I need it to be, I'm gonna buy the Roscoe nine for sure. If I want something that I'm gonna do more upgrading to, then probably a better value is just to get the Roscoe seven. But for me personally, I would just pay the 2700 go with the Roscoe 9. Just buy it and ride it. Another good thing for you to keep in mind if you're on the fence about hardtail, no hardtail is um, if you're newer to riding and you're concerned about, you know, setting up your suspension well and correctly, something you can take the time and learn to do. But I will say that a hardtail will ride way better than a poorly set up full suspension. So it's food for thought. I'm still growing my bank of experience on riding hardtails in particular, but I've still been on quite a few. And this is probably the uh, most comfortable ride in terms of frame compliance that I've been on on a hardtail for someone like my size. Unless you wanna to start to get into expensive carbon hardtails which just, it's a completely different conversation. This is a pretty, uh, pretty great offering. Up a daisy. <laughs> it's good for me to ride a hardtail, 
Hard tails hold you accountable and they don't let you be sloppy. They make you strong physically and they make you a strong, clean rider. You can't be lazy with what you're doing with the back tire. You get to rock this a little bit through some of these sections here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that ice so smooth even on those transitions that can be a little awkward and jostling and off camber. It just really great. We got to take a moment away from the bike review to enjoy this view because it's a shame not to. What a great day out here riding. It's a little chilly getting started, but once you get riding, it's like perfect. I don't know what it is. It's probably around 50 would be my guess. I need to be a little more aggressive in my turns because this bike wants to go fast. So fun. Ooh. All right, now I just gotta get the heck out of here. I'll take Long Canyon, a couple of short climbs, and then we'll just get some flow all the way to the car. So I'm gonna stick with what I said about sizing for my rider size being between sizes. I'd be totally happy with the medium, um, especially because it's going to give me a little more versatility if I want to push this bike into steeper and chunkier terrain. However, if that's not you, maybe you are my size, in between that medium and small, and you don't really plan on pushing the envelope too much. And let's say you're also a new rider, you're just learning to handle a bike for the first time. A small might be a good way to go. So let's talk a little bit about who this bike is for and who it's not for. First of all, I would say it's not for the rider who wants to travel as light and swift as possible. I'm thinking people who are doing big cross country loops. Um, this really is a trail bike. Now, who is it for? I would say this is a great first bike for a lot of people. It's not a beginner bike. So you don't have to be a beginner to really enjoy this bike because you can rail on it and it can handle some stuff. But it is a great one that you can just buy as is, especially the Roscoe 9 build. Buy it, ride it for years. Get a lot of great seasons out of this without changing a thing. So uh, you can rock this bike pretty hard. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to turn. Right, and all the swoopy stuff. It picks up speed really well, but it's not a lot to handle. So it makes it a bike that's going to appeal to riders of a lot of different levels. And I would say if you're, you know, you really want to get into mountain biking and you don't want like a toy bike that's like the easy bake oven of bikes, this is a real bike. <laughs> I also like that this bike is pretty playful which tells me it could be a really fun bike to practice skills on in your neighborhood, at your local skills park. My husband also has a review of this bike and I will link that for you because he's got completely different rider profile than me, very different body dimensions. And so our take on sizing is very different. It could be interesting for some riders to see that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Check out some of my partner links. I've got a great club ride link that'll give you 20% off. I've also got some awesome competitive cyclist links. Thank you so much for watching and uh, let me know in the comments what other bikes you're interested in seeing me review. Get dusty.